Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. I am Monet and you are watching Life is Monet. This is the start of my Black and William vlog and I am so stoked and so excited about it. I have access to all of the books that I need. I'm going to try, I'm gonna try to fit in majority of the books that I wrote for my TBR in this video in this vlog so you guys can get my live full thoughts the only book that i probably won't talk about in depth is all the sinners bleed because th there's going to be a live show on my channel for that one um so if i do mention that in this vlog it will be very brief because i want to hold on to my thoughts um but no guarantee that i will be able to fit in all the books um that i'm reading this month in this vlog because it's only october 2nd and this month is like jam-packed so um me and my bookish friends actually have a trip coming up in like 48 hours that we've been planning we've probably been planning this trip since like may like april may yeah so it's been like you know it feels like a long time coming i'm all packed so like that's a positive so you guys will be seeing me meet up with some booktube darlings booktube friends and i'm like so excited about it because we're gonna be in like this cabin like house in the middle of nowhere and it's just gonna be a fun time of just chilling and reading and drinking wine. Though I think the first book I'm gonna pick up is House of Hunger, but like no promises. For those of you guys who did not watch my TBR video, the books that I rolled include Nana by Brandon Massey, House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson, All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Crosby, The Good House by Tanana Reeve Du, and then The Jigsaw Man by Nadine Matheson. Those are the five books on my TBR that I'm gonna try to fit in this vlog, so. I just got a package in the mail um, that is definitely related to this vlog because it is my purchase from the bonfire that Brie organized. Look at this. I'm so stoked about this. Like, this is definitely my hoodie for the fall season. This is a maroon color. That actually smells pretty good. And this says stories where we don't die first. And then it has the Black Ween trademark. Um, this quote, I'm like so floored that Brie went with it because I was a part of the brainstorming process where we were looking for some like quotes like this to put on the merch. Um, so it was so beautiful to be a part of that and to see some of my ideas come to life on a hoodie that I now own. So um, if you see me wearing this in a couple of clips, you know what happened. Um, I haven't read anything for this vlog. I will tomorrow though, for sure, when I'm on the plane, while I'm traveling, while I'm flying. So um, stay tuned for that. plane I'm starving we're hungry as heck and we still have like 20 more minutes before we go get food so starving. we're just sitting here hungry <laughs> oh, I'm so hungry finally time to eat <laughs> I'm so hungry Oh, Brie, say hi. Brie, be easy. Oh, hello. <laughs> Brie is so much taller than me. Brie's the name. Black the game. The I'm getting a clip with everybody in there. <laughs> Not too much. Stop you missing Ashley. Everybody except Ashley. you guys I am so dead and it's not even day one like we're literally on the way to the cabin or to the lake house it's a three-hour drive um, 
and I needed coffee to function. I'm sorry that this update is so ghetto, but I am halfway through House of Hunger and I am really enjoying it. I am seeing a lot of the things that I liked about The Year of the Witching. And I think that this author just does atmosphere so well. And the book seems like extra creepy because most of it is a mystery to you. She's not explicitly saying what's going on. Like she's not even explicitly calling them vampires. Um, but um, I just wanted to let you guys know that I am halfway through House of Hunger. I'll probably read a little bit on this three hour drive, but that's if I'm awake enough to function. I'm definitely very excited to get to the cabin because the pictures just look so beautiful and I wanna see it in person, so. We are in like three separate cars. Um, so we'll probably be arriving at like three separate times. So we'll see. Okay, I am here, I am settled, I just got out of the shower. I don't know how much reading I'm going to do tonight. Probably none at all if I'm being honest. It's pretty loud downstairs, it's basically a party right now. It is so cool to see everybody in person. Sorry, there was a loud car going by, but yeah. It's so cool to see everybody in person and to vibe with them. It's time for us to make um, pizzas so it's kind of like a build your own pizza topping kind of night so um i don't know if i'll be able to update this vlog again tonight but probably in the morning and hopefully i would have done a little bit reading by then Okay, so I can finally update this vlog. It is officially Friday morning. Um, so we got in yesterday, we got all settled. This morning was super chill and just focused on productivity. So I did manage to read House of Hunger. I'm about 65% of the way into the book. And I don't know if I like this one more than the year of the witching um but i do see an improvement of all the things that i enjoyed when i read the year of the witching and i do still really like this one um it's like her writing gives this very like eerie feeling and so we have our main character marion who is like living her life basically in the slums and she is scrapping and fighting for every penny to her name um and she it's just her and her brother who has an illness to himself and he's bitter and angry and violent and she's sees this posting in this newspaper to become a blood maiden in the north she goes to the north against like her friend and against her brother's wishes to become a blood maiden and at first she comes into this house that has this very steep hierarchy and all the women are vying for the attention of their like matron and she, at first she's like spooked out about it she's like this is weird why is everybody like so lustful how does these dynamic these relationship dynamics actually work with the matron and you start to see this slow change where she is witnessing the madness of everyone else and even though she's observant of it and she's like analytical and trying to figure out like the nature behind this she also like is welcomed into the system and she becomes easily acclimated and so you as a reader start to witness that the same things that she was observing about the other blood maidens and their relationship in this household she is now becoming a true blood maiden herself because she is participating in the system she has the same relationship dynamics um she used to feel bad for like the first maiden because they would get sick and it's a lot of pressure and they're constantly bleeding and that takes a toll on the body and it went from being 
deeply concerned about you know what about the rights of the blood maiden and the health of the blood maiden and why are these girls willing to sacrifice everything that they are and even risk death just to please this matron and then we get into a position where she is now first blood maiden and she is now like jealous of anyone else having a relationship with her matron and there is this like quasi matrimonial connection between them because they're in this deeply intimate relationship but the power dynamic is very very unequal and so yeah she is now in the exact shoes and in the exact place of the person she used to judge before her and I am enjoying it it's not really like progressing in terms of a story like we're witnessing something happen um, but it doesn't really feel like it has a real storyline but not that I'm complaining about that like I still am really liking this and it's making me like curious to know like where we're going and like where we're gonna end and she has given up really on like searching and like trying to solve or find answers to the initial questions that she had and I feel like her our answers to these questions are gonna sneak up on us when she like least expects it and I'm looking forward to that I'm gonna do a bit more reading right now and then I'm probably gonna get in the hot tub because I don't want to leave without taking advantage of that um, and then tonight's probably like a turn up kind of night so yeah I don't know how much more reading I'm gonna get done in this weekend but I'm hoping to finish at least at least House of Hunger um, and then maybe we'll get back to like our regular scheduled reading programming after this weekend is up. It is officially our last night here in the cabin. Today was so much fun. Brie made beignets. They were so good. We also did a seafood boil. Um, so it's just been a weekend with great vibes, great energy, great food. And I'm so ecstatic about that. I have been losing my voice for like the last week. So I'm sorry if this update sounds kind of stretch, but I did finish House of Hunger and I think I'm gonna sell on four out of five stars on this one. I'm still not sure if I preferred The Year of the Witching, um, but this book, I spoke earlier about how I like didn't really know where this book was going and I think that the most apt comparison would be to compare this to A Dowry of Blood because we have, um, this very like gender fluid sexuality fluid um atmosphere and so we have a group of blood maiden females that are all serving a matron but in a lot of ways she is blood sucking and devouring mentally physically emotionally literally figuratively like everything she is sucking the life and the souls out of these girls and they are heavily involved in a power abusive relationship and Marion serves as like our caveat to challenge the system really but she has to go through it and become a part of it and then really become the mode so that she can break it um and I feel like the end of this book kind of hit a lot of the same notes of A Diary of Blood um but that one is from like a first person scenario talking to a um dead previous lover about all the reasons that she needed to kill him um but this one is more of a like reader friendly journey where you can see where the story is going um and you know that someone has to break the hold of like in fact situation and obsession this need to be so completely committed to someone else other than yourself that you lose yourself you don't have any ownership in yourself either and you have this experience with other girls that are also struggling the same way you are so if I was to sum it up the strongest component of the story is the relationship dynamics and how eerie and 
suspenseful she can create this atmosphere with as little details as possible that may frustrate some people because she doesn't necessarily like really flesh out the world um, but there's so much information and so much context that you can take from it what you need um, but I don't know if everybody's going to enjoy that because it kind of makes for a little bit of lazy world building or kind of like a choose your own adventure um, but everybody kind of ends up at the same place in the end we have a pretty early wake up time in the morning um, so I'm gonna chill in my bed I'm gonna read um, probably Witch Hat Atelier volume 4 um, in the morning it's our last breakfast hurrah together and then we are back on the road away from the wilderness but this trip was so worth it I had a ball lifelong friends um, good night tell the people you had a good time Alana I had a great time <laughs> <laughs> worth my money she loves us and it's over life put me first for life it was fantastic <laughs> oh, that's right, Alana. Chanel, tell oh. the people you had a great time. Um, I had an amazing time. It was really fun, and Monet fed me, and now I will go back home and be a starving African child. Not a starving. Starving African child. Wow. Chanel is That's back. something. Chanel, they did us wrong with this life. Now we all want to be vloggers. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> At the I said very... that we're content creators. Yeah. Monet, we're content creators. <laughs> Robin, tell the people you had a fantastic time on our booktuber retreat. I had such a good time. It's the best time I've ever had in my whole entire life. It'll never be repeated ever again. Period. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'll miss you. Thank you. Ashley, you have to tell the people you had a fantastic time. You're telling me I have to tell them that I had a fantastic time. Did you not? <laughs> I had a, a blissful experience. <laughs> Okay, so we just said goodbye to the whole group. Me and Chanel were back at mm -hmm. Alana's house waiting on our flight. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we're gonna go to dinner with Alana's mom. So yeah. ex excited. excited about that. You ready to go home? Dude, I, okay. I miss my apartment in the way that I miss being at home. Yeah. But I don't miss cooking for myself. <laughs> I have been feeding Chanel all weekend. Yep. And I'm gonna be so sad going home and thinking about the garlic I have to peel when I have to make a meal. <laughs> Not the self peeled garlic. <laughs> so I'm officially back home. I made it back home yesterday evening around six o'clock. So um, I spent most of that time just loving on the kiddos, loving on my husband and just getting settled. Today I've been doing a lot of work that was left neglected while I was gone. So it's pretty much a catch up type of day, catch up type of week, taking it pretty easy. It's so hard when you come back from a trip, like a vacation type trip and <laughs> you like, you just don't have the drive. Like who wants to work? right um so yeah i'm trying to find my inspiration i'm trying to find you know my will 
if you will. I did start The Good House. Um, this is more of a hybrid read. I've read some physical and then I've listened to some via audio. So I'm officially 25% into the story and let's talk about it. So we start off with Angela Toussaint who has been raised by her grandmother on this plot of land that is referred to by the community members as The Good House. She was a healer. Um, she was an immigrant. She was an African-American woman and there has been a combination of just her her nurturing skill as well as like superstition and like false beliefs that her ability to heal individuals goes beyond the scientific into the spiritual realm um and so there's this like deeply rooted faith within Angela's grandmother as well as the house because they feel like it just has very good energy on the property um Angela is married she has a teenage son they're hosting a barbecue at the house um and something tragic happens where Angela ends up losing her son um at this house so we jump ahead about a year or two into the future um, she has divorced the father because of his culpability in her son's demise and she is called back to the house for a variety of reasons but she just hasn't been there in a long time so she's going back she's feeling very unsettled she's feeling very nervous um, she likes living in the city she likes being a big shot lawyer and like a talent agent because it's like she's one person within like a pool of people but when she goes back to her small town where she grew up that is so provincial in a lot of ways so small it doesn't have a lot of BIPOC members really Angela and her family are really the only like kind of black individuals within this town and everybody knows her so she's going back to something that is uncomfortable for her and something that is that has like given her trauma and she has experienced tragedy there and everybody knows um, because of how famous and popular her grandmother was and the things that they witnessed with her mother and all variety of things. So we're back at this house and something is just weird. Things are happening that literally don't make sense. And it's almost as if like the things that have occurred could be chopped up to a coincidence or like a weird anomaly, but they keep happening back to back. And so we're not at the point where um, um, you feel like there's a lot going on beneath the surface, but too many things are happening. Too many small things are happening for it to continue to be coincidences. For example, her friend travels back with her and her dog like leaves one day and she's like, I, I did not let him outside at all. Or her friend wakes up downstairs in the basement, which is where her son um, actually lost his life. And she's like, I, I've never sleepwalked in my life. Why am I down here? Um, there's also a man that kind of like walks out and gets hit by a car. And the driver says that like, he looked right at me. Um, he saw me, but that person that was killed in the car accident, he was deaf on one side um, and that side was where the car was coming from. So it's like everybody assumed that maybe he didn't hear the car coming because it was coming from the left side and he's deaf on the left side. But the witnesses are like, no, he turned around, looked at the car and like walked right into it. So it's these situations where depending on the person that is sharing their like perspective with you, it changes some details and those details either turn out to be a coincidence or they turn out to be something much more like ominous it's a very very slow story um we've taken a lot of time to build up Angela her family the lore of the town the lore of her grandmother um but I still feel like we only know her grandmother in like a superficial um way and I feel like there's so much more to Angela's grandmother than she knows but she's also a busy woman juggling a lot of PTSD um a lot of responsibility and she's purposely checked out of what's happening or what has been happening in Sakajawaya because of you know just the pain that resides there of losing two loved ones so I'm comfortable it feels like the type of book that will have a very good payoff for the investment but it is an investment because there's no rush here Tanari Du clearly knows the story that she wants to tell um, and she is in <laughs> no rush to get to her point. She's in no rush to really wow the readers. Um, so it requires some upfront investment, some upfront patience and if you're not hooked on the story in the beginning because of how slow it moves I think that it would take you a while to like 
get invested and it might make you want to DNF the story. I am not there because I find all of these things very interesting. Um, I just know that it's going to take me a bit of a time to like kind of get through it because of how like laborious the reading part kind of feels because it is such a long book. It does help that I am doing a hybrid read between reading it physically and listening to it on audio. I'll be jumping back into it a little later um, but I have so much editing I need to do and I need to get started right now and I don't want this vlog to be super long. And I feel like with all the footage that I have so far, if I don't start editing down and like kind of pacing myself, this vlog could end up being an hour and a half long and that is not my aim, so. Today is actually my first time doing live sprints for Black and Ween. I have not been able to pick up um, The Good House in the last like two or three days just because I've been so busy and I had some other obligatory reads that I needed to finish. So yeah, we are getting ready we're 10 minutes out from going live on my channel and i'm doing two hour sprints my goal is to do two 45 minute sprints so hopefully i have an update by the end of this but it's actually time for me to get set up so i'll be back good morning it is friday morning um and i have had a hectic <laughs> week and i feel like i still have a very very packed weekend but we'll talk about that in a bit um i did finish the Good House by Tanana Reeve Du. Um, I mentioned earlier in my previous updates that I felt like the book was very slow in the beginning and that it took a while for the book to like really find its momentum and to really take off. And that remained consistent throughout majority of the story. But I have to say that once like things started happening, I could not put the book down. Like at that point, I was so deep in the trenches. I was so deep in a sunken place that I was like, I need to see this through. And I feel like there's more like unsettling things that are happening um but not many like surprises are thrown at you um so whatever your expectations is or the things that you are having um like nerves about in terms of the plot remains like the things to be focused on she doesn't really like throw you for a loop or blindside you out of nowhere and I feel like I appreciated that because I was already like my anxiety was already kind of high just dealing with all of the things that were like in the story itself and I don't know how many surprises I could have put up with at that point because then it would have just been way too much for me so I'm gonna settle on four stars for this one I'm really glad I read it I do want to read more from her so this is the beginning but most certainly not the end this book really felt like a classic novel like a black classic novel um, in the same way that reading from N.K. Jemisin or Octavia E. Butler um, feels when you are picking up their books and so I have so much like fondness and appreciation for what she did here um, and what she has contributed to the genre going forth. So my focus for today is to meal prep some meals that I can keep in my fridge for when I just get hungry and don't feel like cooking. I also need to meal prep some breakfast burritos and freeze them. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of cooking and a lot of kitchen cleaning today. Um, I'm also giving my daughter some knotless braids before she returns to school because she has been off for the first two weeks of October um, for intermission and so she's going back to school and I just I feel like I need to do her hair before that so um, I'm already halfway done so we're gonna finish the other half of her knotless braids today and then once I get all of that done I have some laundry to do I'm already halfway through the laundry as well so like I helped myself out yesterday when I was finishing up reading The Good House or listening to The Good House I helped myself with like doing half my daughter's hair and half of my laundry and some cleaning so that I could you know finish off today and then once I'm done with all of that I need to sit down and I need to create a lesson plan for next week for my internship so I have a lot of things to chip away at and I don't want to do a long book so I feel like today I'm gonna listen to not by Brandon Massey which is a let's see how long the audiobook is it's probably gonna take me about four and a half hours to finish Nana so that sounds very perfect um, because I can get through like the bulk of my cleaning and cooking with that so I'm trying to put all the sinners bleed towards the end of this month so that when I do my live show it's fresh on my mind and I have all my fresh and first like emotions and things like that so I'm not picking that book up this week so I feel like I'm gonna read Nana tell you guys my thoughts about that I may or may not include the Jigsaw Man but I probably won't be including all the sinners bleed so we're getting close to the end of this vlog I hope you guys have been enjoying it it is time for me to start cooking. So I am gonna find my headphones and get started.
today has been very successful so far. It's only 4.45, but I've done all of the meal prepping and cooking that I wanted to do earlier. I finished my daughter's hair. I have done all the laundry. I finished Nana by Brandon Massey. And my hope is to get started on this lesson plan so that this day can be a win. So let's talk about Nana. We are following a married couple, Monica and Troy. Monica has recently lost the person that raised her, um, someone that she refers to as as her grandmother. So at the funeral of Monica's grandmother, Grace shows up um, telling her that she is her long lost mother and Monica is grieving at this point and she has always longed for a connection with her biological mother and father and she welcomes Grace in with open arms. Now this book is rather fast paced, it's, sh it's short, so it takes off rather quickly and I think that that's the strong suit of the story. My favorite part about this was absolutely the journey. I feel like the ending could have been stronger. In a lot of ways, the ending felt rushed and it felt abrupt. Um, so there's not a lot of like love loss in terms of like where the story ended. I would have liked for it to end in a different way. I do think that that is what would have compelled me to give it five stars, but ultimately I gave this one four stars as well. But I like this one so much more than The Good House. And I definitely want to read more from this author because like just the unraveling of events. And so this is another one again where like you really understand what's happening. You understand what's at stake. And so there is not a lot of curveballs. You have a full level of expectation for what the author is doing with the story. And I really enjoy that. I am someone who enjoys payoff for an author. I don't need to be shocked or blindsided or surprised in any way. If I can see where we're going and I see you setting up the foundation and executing every plot line and every turn in a way that just feels seamless, then I am really going to enjoy it. And so that's true for this book as well. Um, still really, like I said, no surprises towards the end there. It could have been fleshed out a little bit better, but this was the perfect read for me to listen to while I did all of my errands and chores for today. I'm gonna get started on this lesson plan and I'm gonna start the Jigsaw Man later tonight. I would actually like to get this vlog up this Sunday since it's Friday so I'm going to read as much as I can of the Jigsaw Man between tonight and tomorrow. I probably won't finish it but I'll share some of my initial thoughts before I wrap up this vlog. Happy Saturday. Last night I started reading The Jigsaw Man by Nadine Matheson and I decided to DNF. I'm gonna find another book um, that fits within the prompt for this one to replace this one um, but I recently did a video a couple of months ago where I tried to see if I liked murder mysteries and majority of the authors in those murder mysteries were British. So I feel like I got really acclimated um, and familiar with the writing style and so as soon as I started reading this one it gave me like the same vibes and I was like I think that this author um, is from the UK. So I went online and sure enough Nadine Matheson um, is from London or currently lives in London. I'm not sure which part I read um, but there is just something so um, unique in particular to UK authors especially when they are writing um, mystery novels that include murders because like that's my area of expertise at this point um and it's it's not vibing with me at the moment it's not my preference um it takes a little bit more investment than i am in the mood for right now there's just something about the tone that feels a bit drier to me or like a bit flat to me and i'm just not in the mood for that right now so i decided to dnf this one i don't know at this moment what i'm going to replace that book with but I'm going to switch over to some obligatory reads especially for my Patreon um, because I still need to read um, our Patreon pick of the month um, so I'm gonna go do that and then I'll come back around to all the sinners bleed. Be on the lookout for a community announcement on my channel on when I'm gonna do my live show for all the sinners bleed. I truly hope to see you all there. Every time I try to sit down and record I feel like my voice starts cracking and I hate that for me. Anyways this vlog has been fun to film. Um, if you've made it here leave me Hmm, a food emoji in reference to my trip and I will see you guys in my next one.